Godspeed. Mahoy, all of you flick freaks out there, what is going on? My name is Andrew, and today is the start of a very special little playlist that I'm putting together. You know, a lot of people over the time that I've been doing these videos, they've asked me, uh, you kind of have a similar taste to videos that I do, or your, the videos you like are nothing compared to the films that I like. So I decided, you know what, I'm going to give everybody my top 100 movies of all time. Now, keep in mind, these are my favorite movies. And I believe there is a difference between what I consider a, my favorite movie and what the best movie is. Because a critically acclaimed movie could technically still be better than what I think is my favorite movie. Please keep in mind that just because a movie you love is not on this list, that doesn't take away from it being an amazing movie to you. Or even I could think it's good, it just may not be in my top 100. So if a movie you love is on this list, fantastic. If it's not, that's fine too. It's great for you, okay? Also, feel free to recommend movies to me. Because on my IMDb page, I've only rated about 2,000 movies. So there's a good chance I may not have seen the movie that you really like. But who knows? It could be earlier on in the list, later on down the line. So I say we go ahead and get started with this list. With number 100. Coming in at number 100, we have the classic film, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. This is actually considered to be one of the greatest films of all time. Directed by Milos Forman, this film in 1975 took home five Oscars. One of them went to Brad Dourif, who came out for Best Supporting Actor. You may also remember him from Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers, and Return of the Kings as the snake. Ah, oh, he was so fucking creepy in that movie. But in this, he was kind and loving, and he had that ad that adorable stutter. Then whenever, you know, him and Jack Nicholson were on screen together, they just, the chemistry between them was so fantastic. And then you have Louise Fletcher as Nurse Ratchet, one of the most hated characters, one of the most hated villains of all time in cinema history. There's no way this film could not be on your list. So let's move on now to number 99. Coming in at number 9, we have High Fidelity. In 2000, Stephen Frears introduced one of the indie cult classics to the world. In this movie, we see John Cusack as a record shop owner, who he runs it alongside his two best friends, who are played by Jack Black and Todd Luiso. And the banter between Todd and Jack Black in this film is hilarious. And of all the sad bastard movies out there, this has got to be one of the funniest, one of the most well-written movies of all time. And you know what? I think it really launched Stephen Frears to the world because after that we got amazing movies from him. He gave us The Queen and Philomena. I mean, this is the movie for me personally that introduced me to what he can do as a director. And I'm not really a music person, as I've said in other videos, but this movie makes you want to understand music more. And for that, it definitely deserves a spot on my list. So now I think it's time to move on to number 98. What happens when two of Hollywood's most creative geniuses get together? Well, whenever Clint Eastwood and Paul Haggis do it, you get Million Dollar Baby. One of the best boxing movies of all time. We see Hilary Swank give not only one of the best female performances of all time, just one of the best performances of all time. And then you put her on screen with Clint Eastwood and Morgan Freeman, you're set to have one of the greatest movies of all time. And the fact that we get to see Morgan Freeman knock Anthony Mackie the fuck out. Seriously, one of the best scenes ever. So, I don't know how this could not be on anybody's list. An amazing movie. So, I say it's time to move on to number 97. Coming in at number 97, we have Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels. This is the film that introduced Guy Ritchie to the world, and ever since then, we have said thank you. The movie stars Jason Statham, but it's actually stolen by Vinnie Jones' character Big Chris, who is very adamant about protecting his son while at the same time doing whatever his bosses need him to do. And this movie also introduces us to Guy Ritchie's style of filmmaking, where you have a bunch of people with their own motives, and yet they somehow all get entangled together. And it makes for an amazing movie. So let's move on now to number 96. 
Coming in at number 96, we have one of the most beautiful movies of all time, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. This movie came out in 2000 and took the world by storm. It won Best Foreign Language Film, and it's actually one of the few movies to be nominated for Best Foreign Language and also be nominated for Best Picture. So whenever I first heard about this movie, I thought it was going to be just another martial arts film, which I was okay with, but then when I saw it, and it also introduced me to Ang Lee and how beautiful his movies can be. And after that, I can say that Ang Lee is an artist, and this movie is his masterpiece. So let's move on now to number 95. Two Guy Ritchie movies back-to-back, -back, there must be something to this man. After watching Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels, Brad Pitt actually contacted Guy Ritchie and said, I have to be in your next movie, which is astonishing because it's normally the other way around, people knocking on Brad Pitt's door. So you must know you're doing something right, Guy Ritchie, and we know you did because you gave us one of the most iconic characters of all time, Mickey. And thank you for that because I personally think that Mickey is Brad Pitt's best character. And again, we see Guy Ritchie's story arcs of the interweaving web of storylines all coming together. And you had a fantastic cast. You had Brad Pitt. You had Benicio Del Toro. You had Jason Statham. You had Vinnie Jones. You had a plethora of amazing actors in this movie. And it led you to great things. So now, let's move on to number 94. Coming in at number 94, we have Pulp Fiction. This is probably Quentin Tarantino's most famous film. And for good reason. You have an all-star studded cast with a brilliant story, and it also continues with Quentin Tarantino's style of filmmaking, where you have past, present, future, all mangled in a random order. Whenever you have Bruce Willis, John Travolta, and Sam Jackson in a movie, you know it's going to be amazing. And I'm glad that we got this movie, one of his best, but not the best. You'll have to continue to watch the list to find out what other ones are coming up. So let's move on now to number 93. Well, you didn't have to wait long because coming in at number 93, we have Inglorious Bastards. Again, we see Brad Pitt giving an astounding performance, but this film did more than that. It introduced Americans to Christoph Waltz, and ever since then, he's given us amazing performances. And including the upcoming Bond film, I cannot wait to see what his performance is like. While this film does throw historical accuracy out the window, it really focuses on what we all want, Nazi hunting, and that's why it deserves a spot on our list. So let's move on now to number 92. Number 92 on our list is The Life Aquatic with Steve Zissou, what I consider to be the best Wes Anderson film. The story of this film is an oceanographer who has fallen from the spotlight, and whenever he tries to get back on top, hilarity ensues. You can always count on Bill Murray to give you an amazing performance, but I think that he is actually matched in this film by Jeff Goldblum. So, if you don't believe me, I guess you're just going to have to check out the film to see for yourself. Now let's move on to number 91. Finishing off this particular list at number 91, we have The Aviator. This is the second time we see Martin Scorsese and Leonardo DiCaprio team up with each other, and they definitely don't disappoint because we get to see the extraordinary story of Howard Hughes. The true life story of this man going from riches to insanity in the blink of an eye is a fascinating thing to watch. If you haven't seen this movie, I highly recommend it. I think this is the movie that everybody saw Leonardo DiCaprio and said, you know what, this man deserves an Oscar. You know, he's still chasing it to this day. He's going to get it soon, though, I have a feeling. One day. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this section of the list. Tune in next Saturday to find out numbers 90 through 81. I hope you guys have enjoyed it so far. If you wouldn't mind, hit the subscribe button over there. And if you really wouldn't mind, support me on Patreon. Because we're all going to make my channels better together. Speaking of channels in the plural, if you're not subscribed to my Game Geeks channel where I do Let's Plays and Walkthroughs, I highly recommend you do so. You can find the link in the description box below. I'll catch you guys in the next video, and until then, fuck strikes, and Godspeed.